Angelina, Greta and siblings Isla and Jude are living with dementia. Tonight their mothers have come together to beg for more research and greater awareness of this terrible condition. Honey, honey, don't conceal it. Uh -huh. Honey, honey. Yeah? Being a teenager can be hard enough. But for Angelina Latti, it's exhausting. They're all the things she loves. Putting on makeup, fake nails. You ready? Dancing and singing with her mum, Nikki. Super trooper, lights are gonna find me. Shining high the sun. At just 17 years old, Angelina should be preparing for her year 12 exams. Instead, she's facing a far greater test. So we're in the crowd, there's you. Your child quickly fading away in front of your eyes and you can't do anything. Nothing. No baby. Angelina has childhood dementia. A condition so easily recognised in the elderly not in energetic youngsters who should have their whole lives ahead of them. Do you think dementia and you think children? How can it happen to children? It doesn't make sense. You think it's something that will happen in old age? I'm right here. I know, and you're here. Two and a half years ago, this was Angelina. A bright, bubbly and driven 15-year-old. I was waiting for the bus when a lady came. From a little girl, she loved performing. I'd be watching her on stage and she's following and looking at the other students of what to do next. And I'm like, that's very unusual for her. What are you, what are you doing at school? But I just thought, oh, here's high school, teenager, you know, distractions, boys. But Nikki realised something far more devastating was consuming her daughter. She started dropping glasses, you know, she's setting the table for me and just dropping them and they're smashing. And we're like, what's wrong? She goes, I don't know, Mum, I'm just smashing the glasses. And then if she'd smash another one, I'm like, OK, something's wrong. Having constant seizures, doctors thought Angelina had epilepsy. It would take them nine months to diagnose her with a rare genetic condition called Lafora disease. It's just your worst worst nightmare to hear that um you know there's something wrong with your child and um you can see them suffering so much um and then not to be able to read and write um or walk properly or think um you know especially someone who was so smart while her friends continue to strive around her angelina began losing the simplest of skills and she knew her life was slipping away. It scares me. So she'd be standing outside the toilet and go, Mum, where's the toilet? I'm like, it's just there. So we'd have to take her in. Or, where's my room? Greta Gowans is just six years old. For her, signs of childhood dementia came on much sooner. She smiled late and she sat late and she walked at 18 months, which was just... That was kind of the cutoff to when we're going to start investigating things. Olivia will never forget the phone call when she found out her daughter had Rett syndrome at just three years old. It's also caused by a genetic mutation that leads to childhood dementia. It was quite confronting to think that my daughter has a form of dementia. You meant to watch your parents decline, not your children. Three years on, Greta is falling even further behind. I don't think anyone should have to watch their child not be able to walk one day and you just don't know what their future holds. So Stevie's about 18 months in this video and you can see he was still able to smile and laugh. It's hard to believe that in this video, the mama? <laughs> little Sebi only had months left. His mum, Anna. But you can see all these videos and photos that we've got, that that's what we've got now forever. The toddler passed away less than two years after he was found to have Tay-Sachs disease. Once again, it causes childhood dementia. Tay-Sachs is horrible. It's brutal. And you would never want this to happen to anyone you know or any child. Um, so I'll just, I'm just going to be honest with it because I can't paint it in a nice picture. Um, it is really watching your child die slowly, but it happens quite quickly. People just don't associate dementia 
with children. No, they don't, sadly. It's an old person's disease. There are 70 rare genetic conditions that lead to childhood dementia. Associate Professor Kim Hemsley is leading a team of scientists here at Flinders University in Adelaide. They're determined to find a treatment for one of the disorders. These children have um, a mistake in their DNA. This means that the DNA that should be enabling the production of a particular protein or enzyme isn't there or it isn't there in sufficient quantities. With a brain in this condition, how would the child be presenting? Mm. So this child would have difficulties in learning um, new knowledge, retaining knowledge, speaking, using all of the vocabulary that they once had, that is going to be slowly lost. It affects as many children or leads to as many deaths a year in Australia as childhood cancer. Which is why Professor Hemsley says researchers need more awareness and funding now. There definitely needs to be a great deal of concern because of the devastating nature of the conditions and more more research on them so that children can, and these are the words of a, a, um, a parent, they can go on to have careers rather than carers. Every three days a child is born here in Australia with a condition that will lead to childhood dementia. It's almost as many children born with cystic fibrosis, but that's a condition we've heard of and one that has far greater support and better outcomes for patients. Childhood dementia does exist. It's a, it's a real entity. Paediatric neurologist, Dr. Nick Smith, says children living with dementia are equally deserving of the same care and attention as adults. What would it mean for your patients to all be seen under the same umbrella? By recognising this group of illnesses uh, as a collective, uh, and with the commonalities of problems that these children and their families face, we can better structure our healthcare systems to deliver the, the really critical care that these children need. Leading the charge for change is Meg Donald. My daughter, you know, she, she barely remembers my name. <laughs> Both of Meg's children have San Filippo disease. Is it? Is it? 12-year-old Isla and 10-year-old Jude aren't expected to live past their teens. I'm going to go through life and, and not hear my daughter say to me, I love you ever again. Or never hearing, you know, one of my children come to me and say, oh, I had a dream and it was about this. You know, just those tiny little things. The adult brain is deteriorating in the same way as the children's brain. 12 months ago, Meg started the Childhood Dementia Initiative, a foundation focused on recognising that so many children are suffering in the same way. We were all facing the same challenges and we were all fighting for the same things for our children. And I really came to think there's got to be a better way of doing this. As we're describing these conditions as dementia, there's a, there's a far greater level of compassion and empathy from the general community around what these kids need. All of these families talk about their struggle to access adequate care and support for their kids. You'd think you'd have enough to deal with without having to fight for your basic needs. I've had to become my children's voice uh, and advocate for every aspect of their care. I feel like I've fought a lot. I've fought health systems, I've fought uh, social systems, I've fought for support and for everything that my kids need. Even with just N NDIS understanding what we're going through and you know when that we get assessments done, it, no one knows how to or what to do, like I get denied so many times. Got it? You know, you're anticipating the grief that's coming because they're slowly fading away. Feeding her daughter through a tube and recording pages of medication are constant reminders of Angie's decline. But still, Nikki dreads the day it will end when she'll rely on the song that she wrote for her baby girl. What made you write this? I, it was like a prayer. Oh, I just needed to give her something because, you know, our hearts are breaking. And just to me, it was like a memory that I could keep forever. 